The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is hi. I'm Rob. I work in a school just outside of Milton Keynes, and I've taught every year group from reception up to year six. And I'm Nicola, and I teach a junior school in Hampshire. And at the moment, I teach year six children. I have also worked at Teacher Training College, and hopefully, enthuse students to be fantastic educators themselves. And today, we are seeing what art we can create with a folk tale from the Indian jungle. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for the real king of the jungle. There, you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback, joyously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's Corky Paul, as well as the full audio book for you to download at any time. Right now, let's continue making things with Nicola and Rob. We were making things in design and technology yesterday. We're、um, getting a little bit more artistic today. Rob, do you want to kick us off with ages four to seven? Sure. A wonderful way to explore、uh, jungles and forests is to do some art outside、hmm. rather than sitting in the classroom. So, if you've got the space, if you've got the the areas attached to your school, then you could have a go at. Creating pictures, models of these animals using natural materials.、Mm. You could bring the materials in and put them on a piece of paper, or you could create almost sculptures, Andy Goldsworthy-esque sculptures in your playground、yeah. or field of some of the creatures that are involved in this story.、Mm. So this would involve, I'm imagining, sticks, mud, definitely, definitely <laughs> some mud, grass, leaves. And depending on the time of year, you're going to get different colours. So you could do your red panda. Or... The stones count as natural materials. Yep. If you have them outside, it's a it's a natural material.、Mm -hmm. They're great for eyes. Stones.、Hmm. Do you know? Thinking of some of the、um, religious education we were discussing a couple of days ago,、um, and also trying to keep this within the world of the story, I'm wondering whether you could have the animals wanting to make one of these statues whenever an animal in the story sacrifices itself, because、uh, that's going to tie in with a lot of themes that you find in religions all around the world. Say when、uh, I, th I think bison is the first one to get eaten, isn't it? So.、Uh, A bison goes off to sacrifice, and the rest of the animals decide that they're going to make a little statue to bison. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, that would fit perfectly. And with the the range of different animals, you're going to get so many different interpretations of what these animals look like. Yeah, absolutely. As as I move slightly further up the school, I might ask my children to create a, like a, a composite image, so using、mm. paint or pens and pencils, but adding to it. Adding detail using the parts from outside as well, so it's kind of they had to think in a different way about how they're going to create their art. Excellent. Just、uh, out of interest, is statues? Would that be art, or would that be design and technology?、Um, I think if well, if you made them out of clay, then it would be art. So I think working with clay is part of the art curriculum. Okay. If you were going to make them out of anything else, I guess, and you might be looking at. DT. I mean, I guess it depends on、mm. how far you want to go. If you're looking at the proportion of how long the legs are compared to the body, then that is definitely、mm. more design technology. But if it's just we're going to create some statues to look at how these animals looked, then yeah, you're focusing on a different skill. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just just curious as to where the overlap is,、yeah. <laughs> I guess, because you know you can make statues out of anything. If you make them out of woodwork and you're getting your hammer and your chisel, does that suddenly turn it from art into a, a DT project?、Mm. It's that grey area in between, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But DT needs to be almost for a purpose. I guess it is、mm. a purpose, isn't it? Because you're having a memorial of that character. 
but the design and making is for a particular purpose. If you can say what that purpose is for and you're doing it for that, that that's more DT. Okay. Gosh, there's still overlaps though. I mean, when I'm writing a story, I often plan it and I'm designing the tale before I go and um, use the mm, technology of true. language to, to craft it. But, uh, you know, we're starting to go into semantics now. Let's uh, <laughs> rescue us, <laughs> please, Nicola, with some art for ages 7 <laughs> to 11. Okay. Um, love the ideas for, for the younger children there. And actually, you could easily develop some of those of older ones, art collages. Um, one of my children in my class, when we shared this story, was saying, oh, what, we could do a collage with natural materials. So same sort of ideas, but but I also see see the idea of perhaps doing some printing. Hmm. It could be you take an aspect of the animal like their hoof or their face and you develop a print perhaps on polystyrene is quite good. Yeah. Um, you put, cover it with paint and then carefully print it and then developing that into something like make it maybe a bag. Maybe you print animal prints on a bag and you, you develop a product that perhaps the children are going to sell at a, you know, the local fete. You know, it could, it could be quite big. So um, using art for being able to develop it to real life objects and situations but I think printing would be a really nice way from the animals I mean the obvious other point is to draw draw the animals mm. my, my class were very excited about the idea of drawing the animals or <laughs> to create clay figures of the animals all of those things as well which we I know we've mentioned the other idea linked a little bit to the idea that I had um, previously with the play script idea and, and the DT idea but maybe creating masks like animal masks oh, okay. and Instead of maybe a, making a puppet, designing a mask that they then use for the drama. Mm. So that's another way way into that as well. You know, there have been a few times in that, Nicola, where you mentioned that these were ideas that your children had. Did, did you basically get your class to um, help you put together <laughs> your responses for this podcast? I certainly use them. Basically, I shared the story and then I we brainstormed together and they came up with brilliant ideas. And obviously, I've developed that further. But yes, they were very much a part of it. Do you know, I really love the idea of, of encouraging our listeners to do that as well. Tell the story and then just say to your children, right, what do you think we could uh, do in class now that we've heard this story? <laughs> Empowering our students. Absolutely. Have you ever tried that, Rob? Not, not to the same level, but kind of where could we go next with this learning we've done we've done a bit it ties in quite nicely we do a lot of um, mantle of the expert which uses narratives to help mm. and you can go whichever way that the the zeitgeist is going in your class yeah yeah mantle of the expert has a lot of parallels with the way storytelling works doesn't it so yeah yeah but that's why you are so prolific with your ideas when you come on here <laughs> rob <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favourite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, the animals of the Indian jungle will help us teach music and physical education. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio and we hope to hear your story soon. So... Cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon! soon.